Hi, and welcome back to Teesum Digital. I am Anam Khan, the head of content here at Fox on Media. And joined by me today, I have Jeff Shorties and Subaya Subramanian from the State Street Alpha team. Hello, and welcome both. To kick things off, it will be great if we can have brief introductions about, about yourself. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Subaya Subramanian. I'm globally re responsible for Alpha Data Services, uh, State Street's uh, global uh, data as a service offering. I have uh, many years of expertise uh, in the data space, specifically um, servicing um, asset managers. And hello, I'm Jeff Shortis. I'm the product owner of the Alpha Data Platform. Um, as with Sabaya, I've spent um, almost my entire career working with asset managers in the data space, having built some of the uh, industry's early data warehouses, having served as chief data officer for a global asset manager, and having built a leading data governance uh, company within the asset management space. Perfect. Thank you very much both for that. Um, Jeff, can you outline some of the challenging challenges facing asset managers today in terms of data management and also on a general industry-wide basis? Sure. Um, asset managers are faced with uh, new challenges in the data space, uh, primarily caused by, um, I think, a couple of um, um, themes. Um, the first is um, there's more data than ever available um, to be analyzed uh, by data consumers. And the data teams are responsible for putting together the frameworks and methodologies for um, really dealing with this at scale. Um, and, um, and it's a new, new sort of challenge incorporating new types of data to be managed um, from a structured perspective and unstructured, per unstructured perspective um, and um, the velocity uh, expectations of the data consumers in terms of uh, the availability of this information is uh, vastly increased. Um, the second theme that um, is, is, is really, I think, uh, a game changer is um, the, da the data consumers are, have really been empowered with new tools and new methods for analyzing data from you know, uh, data integration and business intelligence and data science perspectives. And this is really putting a lot of stress on the data teams to deliver more timely data and providing an infrastructure that performs um, much faster at scale. Mm -hmm. So Baya, how do you uh, how do you think the points Jeff has mentioned um, intersect with the trends that you are seeing in data services? Yeah, yeah, some of some of the great points that Jeff made, right, where you know the need for just large amounts of data needed fast and needed now, that trend is only going to go up, right? So one of the questions that asset managers globally are asking themselves is, if I want to reinvent my operating model, how would I do it? What we mean by that is, yes, we need power to run our company, but that doesn't mean you go and set up a, a nuclear power plant and run lines, right? You go and buy power from an organization and then worry about how you're going to use it within your organization. The very same analogy is what asset managers are grappling with, right? I need data, but do I have to do the, everything super nuts myself? Or can I go to an organization like State Street to, to actually provide me the data I need as a service so that I can focus my energy, my staff in value added you know, activities to service our clients, to service uh, our front office rather than watch you know, data load all day, right? So that's a big thing. The other big theme connected is how can I transform the staff I have to be more data scientists, right? Where they're using data rather than currently the situation that we have you know, business analysts and more technologists who are watching data and, and scrubbing it and all that, and they don't spend enough time actually using it. So that, those are the couple of big trends we are seeing uh, and, and not to be confused with completely, am I going to outsource data management or not? So the trend we are seeing is it's a continuum of service, right? Where there are certain things that, that clients can buy as a, as a service that can be done at scale, and then they would still keep other stuff that is close to their business is what we're seeing. Mm -hmm. And Jeff, for firms considering a new approach to the data warehouse, why do you think now is an ideal time? Well, I think it's a very interesting time due to some of the macro trends um, we're seeing um, around um, the industry. Um, of course, um, as Sabaya mentioned, there's a tremendous uh, momentum moving to outsource service offerings, um, where, which allows companies to focus their efforts on 
uh, areas where um, they um, really have a unique uh, intellectual property. Um, this does change the dynamic around data, however, in the, some of the expertise that existed within the company uh, around some of the really kind of detailed nuances um, about data are now moving outside the company. So the need to govern that information and the need to have um, effective communications with that outsource model, with that outsourcer and the need to govern that outsource model itself um, are drastically increased. Um, the second big trend is um, most companies are well along the way to migrating to the cloud, their infrastructure to the cloud. And there's many reasons for this from a security perspective, but also, also from a scale, speed and cost management perspective. And of course the cloud offers a tremendous um, number of opportunities, but that's another area that needs to be tightly governed because those costs can get out of control and those security mechanisms, while impressive, need to be properly implemented. Um, and this cloud framework has introduced new types of tools uh, to build data platforms on or to leverage within your data platform that are real game changers. Um, we're working with a vendor called Snowflake and Snowflake provides us with the ability to seamlessly share data with our clients without uh, any integration activities needing to occur by the client. Uh, this is a real game changer in um, time to market. Snowflake also provides a marketplace where we can bring in data from other vendors that the, our clients rely on in the same manner. Um, so this um, overall um, opportunity uh, that's available from these three trends, I think, is, is, is really uh, causing, uh, resulting in a unique uh, time to um, revisit your data platform approach. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeff, for that. Um, Savaya, my next question is to you. When considering in insourcing versus outsourcing, are there certain activities firms might definitively want to keep in-house um, and what might they want to outsource? Yeah. So that's a that's a great question. Uh, more and more, what we are hearing from the clients, you know, ten years ago, you know, the the whole concept was, you know, um, my my firm's data needs are very unique, so I need to be very customized. But that trend, that has that mindset has changed from our clients. A lot of our clients are, how can I be part of your standard offering, right? Because if you look at a lot of these activities, whether it is managing reference data, managing indexes, managing the quality of analytics ratings, so I, I can keep going, right? Or even code trading activities like setting up a brand new security for trading, a lot of this stuff has gotten standardized, right? So those are all prime candidates for to be outsourced because there is nothing unique about a particular index. It's, you know, it's the same index. We need to make sure the data is, is, is cohesive across sources. Uh, so a lot of that stuff uh, can be outsourced and, and that's the trend we are seeing, right? And, and what is also fueling this, as Jeff mentioned this, is technology, right? Cloud and things like Snowflake have really, really taken us to a place where it doesn't really matter where this data is, right? Previously, you know, it was in my data center versus yours that caused other issues, but now since everything is on cloud, clients are able to seamlessly access this data, right? So a lot of these things that was once uh, has to be kept in house are now prime candidates for outsourced. What would I keep in houses, you know, again, again a point, key point that Jeff made is, is governance, right? At the end of the day, it's client's data, right? And, and, and they are making key investment decisions. So governance is a key piece that, that clients have to keep in house to make sure they exactly know the quality and the status of the data they are using. So this is one. The other one is like I said, the use of the data, right? So how they, how, how they take a particular piece of information, how they use it for their business, that is their secret sauce, right? So more and more, like I said in my first you know, response, clients want to make their staff as data scientists, right? That is not something they can outsource because that is unique to their business model, whether they are an active manager or, an, or a passive manager or a hybrid manager. Those are the things that would, would obviously be you know, in-house. And the other area is, is anything that touches their clients, right? Because if they're delivering you know, information, key, um, you know, key, um, you know, um, more qualitative things to their clients, those are all things that, that would, would obviously be, uh, you know, um, uh, insourced, you know, so, so they, it's close to them uh, rather than being outsourced. Uh, but the list of uh, things that could be outsourced is rapidly growing. Even in the last five years, we have seen a big growth in what could be outsourced and a lot of clients have successfully done it. 
Mm -hmm. And Jeff, can you speak briefly about how firms might approach data governance? Um, what should they take into consideration while doing so? I think the first thing you have to take in, into consideration is the, 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 the need for effective uh, governance or the realization of data governance is um, really drastically increased due to um, this empowered data consumer. Um, the data consumers have the ability to analyze data faster than ever, generating new ideas and new products, but they're throttled by their ability to understand the data. That's both from an ability to understand what the data is, but also what sort of quality expectations should they assert um, around the data. So the ability to provide an effective governance framework where um, you can um, speed the time um, for those data consumers to understand the information and to assess its quality um, uh, characteristics um, will have a vast impact on their productivity and the overall innovation uh, factor um, for the firm. Mm -hmm. And my last question is to both of you. How can your clients benefit from a holistic data management strategy that the Alpha Data Platform offers from both technological and servicing perspectives? Jeff, yeah. would you like to go first? Um, sure. So from a technology perspective, I think um, the Alpha Data Platform is just uniquely positioned um, in the industry due to its affinity to the front office capabilities uh, offered by Charles River and the um, number of services that are um, offered by State Street. Our ability to bring this data together in a frictionless way for our client while simultaneously uh, providing near real-time views of the data really changed the game. Um, and I, I no longer kind of label um, this um, space data warehousing. It's a data platform because it's active and it involves touch points with many other components of your ecosystem and um, through our partnership with Snowflake um, involves the seamless integration of many other types of data. Um, so I think um, our approach here is really um, empowering for our clients and um, really um, accelerating um, their ability to um, glean IP from their data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Just to add to that, you know, the way that we think about uh, data is data at scale, right? We got to be able to do this at scale, both from a technology perspective, whether using a cloud and other technologies, or from an operations perspective, right? Data at scale. What we mean by that is, for example, if you look at the sheer number of people that are working on this dedicated on data, we have over eight global locations where there are you know over 500 folks just focused on this uh, you know, servicing aspect, right? So we are able to bring scale to this, to this unique, uh, you know, in a very unique way, you know, the sheer number of clients we are working with, what we're beginning to see is a big convergence of their requirements, right? As we sit back and look at all the clients we are working globally, it's a big convergence of common things we could do at scale much more efficiently um, so, so that, you know, we could bring, you know, a, a lot of streamlining, right? To this particular process and just, traditionally, uh, you know, in-house uh, complicated process, right? So we are able to bring the scale is, is what I would say. Really, thank you very much, Jeff and Subaya for joining me today. It was really interesting discussion that we had. Hopefully our audience have enjoyed it as well. And uh, they look, hopefully they are able to join us again at the tech show to hear more from Charles River. Thank you very much.